last class we were discussing what is power uh, and, and what is efficiency what, and how can we find efficiency using energy and how can we find efficiency using power. Now, when all this is done, okay, let's see if, if anything is left over there. Okay. Work done, energy transfer, power. Good. Now, <clears throat> so if I throw an object upwards, this is the path when object is going upward. And this is when the object is coming downwards. This is max height or top point. Okay. So to to throw an object upward, we we have to put some kinetic energy into it. So object is going up. So while the object is going up, its kinetic energy is converting into gravitational potential energy because it is gaining height. When object gains height, gravitational potential energy converts into, oh sorry, kinetic energy converts into gravitational potential energy. So if one type of energy is converting into another type of energy, so it means the first type should decrease and the second type should increase. So that means the kinetic energy is decreasing and the gravitational potential energy is increasing. So object is going up. It is very close to the top. gravitational potential energy at this point will be far more than kinetic energy. So gravitational potential energy is very small and kinetic energy, so opposite. Kinetic energy is very small, gravitational potential energy is very large as compared to them. So at the top, what will happen at the top? At top, Speed is zero. So what else should become zero if speed is zero? Answer is kinetic energy. Because kinetic energy is half mv squared. If v becomes zero, the whole equation becomes zero. And kinetic energy equal to zero. Now, if you believe in law of conservation of energy that you must, if you're studying physics, uh, if we believe in law of conservation of energy, then if one type of energy has decreased, it means that it has converted into some other form of energy. A type of energy can increase and decrease, but the total energy has to stay the same. At the top, when there is maximum height, kinetic energy becomes zero and gravitational potential energy is maximum and equals to kinetic energy when thrown. So this is a very important line because this will help you to establish a mathematical relationship. Pay attention. When object is up, its kinetic energy is decreasing, gravitational potential energy is increasing. So at the bottom, kinetic energy is maximum. At the top, gravitational potential energy is maximum. If we ignore
any other transfer of energy like ignore their resistance sound heat like we 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 are totally ignoring any other form of energy that has been used in the process so we are only thinking that kinetic energy is converting into gravitational potential energy and gravitational potential energy converts back into kinetic energy when object is on its way back when object is coming back gravitational potential energy will convert into kinetic energy and at this point object will have maximum kinetic energy and and no gravitational potential energy or the same gravitational potential energy when object was thrown up so this is the only transaction that is happening kinetic energy converts into gravitational potential energy now so when thrown up loss of kinetic energy is equal to gain of gravitational potential energy so a half mv square is equal to m g h can we simplify this thing yes we can m over m, m? can get cancelled m over m m get cancelled v square equals to 2 g h so this is a relationship between initial velocity and maximum height note this is completely independent of mass and this is where examiner is going to play mind games with you he will say that we throw a stone or with a speed of 10 meter per second find the maximum height it will go to so what you do is you you use one or two mv square equals to 2g h and you you say that okay it is Uh, 10 square over 20, and you find out that it will go to a height of five meters. Okay, he says that I am throwing an object upward with a speed of 10 meter per second. Find the maximum height it will go to. You use this formula, v square equals to 2 gh, and you calculate the maximum height, and you find it five meters. In the next part, examiner starts mind games with you. He says that now a stone with more mass is thrown with the same speed. How will be? How will the height gained by the second stone be different from the first one? Now, it is a trick question. If you look at the equation, you will find out the mass became irrelevant. We we cancel the mass on both sides, so it like it doesn't matter. If you are throwing the same with the same speed. it means you are already giving it more kinetic energy 
if you are throwing a heavier object with the same speed it means you are providing it with more kinetic energy so it will gain more gravitational potential energy till the height it will get to will be same so it doesn't matter if you change the mass increase or decrease the mass if you throw an object with the same speed it will go to the same height regardless of its mass so mass is irrelevant same uh, thing can happen if an object is for thrown or dropped down the only difference will be like the equation will be same the height drop will be same everything will be same uh, but the concept can be a little different because in this case it is not the kinetic energy that converts into gravitational potential energy if, it, if an object is dropped if dropped loss of gravitational potential energy equals to gain of kinetic energy so again mgh equals to half mv square and i hope you can see that the m is again irrelevant so 2 gh equals to v square same relationship but the concept is different that in this case it is not the kinetic energy that converts into gravitational potential energy it is gravitational potential energy that converts into kinetic energy so this was one thing that was left okay this is a uh, syllabus let's go through the syllabus this is this is uh, this is what you should do whenever you're done with a topic if you're preparing a topic uh, you, you should all have the document of syllabus with you once you're done with a topic you should uh, go to the syllabus open the topic and read it line by line and just play tick and cross with it this will help you to 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 plan your revision plan work have we done this work done is forced to do which is also able to energy converted from form to another form now this how useful energy may be obtained or electrical power generated from chemical energy stored in a fossil fuel what can be the the bad things using chemical energy of fossil fuel to produce electricity it is harm for the atmosphere it is uh, very expensive And and fuel is a scare thing, and it will. It's not uh, renewable. The, the, the there will be a time. It is not renewable. It the, there will be a time uh, when we will run out of fuel, and if we depend on fuel, oh, we will be in a very miserable condition. We 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 make other ways of producing electricity. So there are uh, pros and cons. What what is the pro of fossil fuel? uh pro that it is available like your petrol pump there is a huge system developed we we can get fossil fuel anywhere we want to we, we cannot get solar energy everywhere we we cannot get solar energy we cannot get solar energy if we live in apartments because uh, in apartments we are not always provided with roof we we, we just live uh in cities it is very hard to find a uh, space to put uh, solar panels uh, windmills they occupy huge space they, they are very noisy uh, what what else uh, everything will have pros and everything will have cons what is the pro fuel it is available it is readily available you just go to the petrol pump you grab petrol you grab diesel you get, grab uh, a coronal first uh, a crude oil or anything that you, need. you just can get it it is ready to use so that is a good thing about fossil fuel bad thing is 
that it, it produces gases that that participate in global warming they are harmful for the atmosphere and everything now chemical energy stored in biofuel again they are equally harmful for the atmosphere but the good thing is that they are not care they, they can be regenerated so biofuel is an example of a renewable source of energy like in in countries like brazil and some parts of australia we we use wheat to produce alcohol and that alcohol is used to drive cars that alcohol is used to uh, burn in generators to produce electricity so biofuel is is a good example of uh, renewable source of energy but still it is harmful for the atmosphere when it burns it produces carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide in excess now water including energy stored in wave tides and water behind hydroelectric dam i think Excuse we have me, discussed sir? that that um, sir, when water is stored behind dam yes so you can so we we discussed that as well you can find that in in the note that uh, hydroelectric power station we use gravitational potential energy of the water that converts into kinetic energy that makes the turbine rotate that turbine makes the generator rotate where there is a coil in a magnetic field we cut the magnetic field line and electricity is produced now geothermal pros it is free you don't need to pay anything like it is the heat of earth that we can use to uh, produce electricity but the, the problem is that it is very expensive to install there is uh, you you would say sir how can you say free and, and very expensive in the same line answer is that it is free as it has no running cost you can produce electricity for free but it has a huge installment cost like when you are installing it it has a very expensive infrastructure so you you have to drill into a several kilometers and uh, you can get to the temperature that you need you send water over there it you can come back as a precious steam and you know what to do with high pressure steam to produce electricity then we can use a problem uh, it is nuclear yeah so it all I can't hear you sir this is what i want you to make your habit like whenever you're done with a topic you should go through the list you should go through the syllabus and and see if if you can find out the parts of of the topic that you want to talk to the teacher about okay so infrared electromagnetic wave from sun heat is solar panel so this is something we have discussed as well describe the advantage and disadvantage of each method like uh, every method no matter how how good it sounds like we can use solar panels solar panels are they, they look very good very very uh, nice but the, they also come with problems like we need a huge space we have to depend on daylight we we cannot produce electricity where there is a there is uh, uh, there are clouds all the time 
if we have less sunny days, then electricity will be less. So everything has pros, everything has pros, and you should know all of them. Describe advantage and disadvantage. Understand the qualitative concept of efficiency of energy transfer. Qualitative means that you should know whenever there is energy transfer, uh, energy input, total energy input is equal to total energy output. But useful energy output it is always less than total energy input. So the ratio between useful energy output and total energy input is called efficiency. Useful out, total in, is called efficiency. Now, <clears throat> know that the radiation from sun remains source of energy for all energy sources except geothermal and nuclear and tidal. Sun makes fossil fuel. Sun, reason for solar energy. Sun is reason behind wind energy. Sun is reason behind Uh, Tisha, how for wind energy? Hydro. Yes, Mark. What, what did you say? How is it the main source for wind energy? Oh, good question. Let's say if we have two cities. This is city A. This is city B. And and there are there are clouds on on city A, but there are no clouds on city B. So there is more sun shining on. City. So which which city will have more temperature, higher temperature than the other? City B. City B. So air over here will become less dense. Air becomes less dense, so it rises. So the air at A will rush towards B. So sun produces convectional current. Are you familiar with the term convectional current? Yes. When, when in a fluid, one part of the fluid is heated, it becomes less dense, so it rises up. And the other part of the fluid, they replace it. So because of this, this uh, movement, obviously the molecules inside, uh, they are shifting from one place to another place. And this is what causes uh, wind on earth, okay?
So, know that the energy released by the nuclear fusion is, nuclear fusion is that when smaller nuclei they they merge together to make a bigger nucleus and they release energy this is called fusion okay fusion is a process in which uh, smaller molecules come together and form a larger nucleus we will study this thing in uh, at the end like when we will be doing nuclear physics. But uh, the thing is that whatever comes our way, because we are preparing for the exam in May right now, like in, in two, two months from now. So what we do is whatever we find, we, we have a small introduction of that thing, even if that is not in our topic right now. Know that the research being carried out to investigate how energy released by the nuclear fusion can be used to produce electrical energy on a large scale. So we can uh, use the nuclear energy, uh, nuclear fusion energy in a control environment. We can produce energy from nuclear fusion that can produce heat. Heat can produce steam. Steam can produce high pressure steam. That can produce mechanical energy. That can produce electric. Just one second. We produce electricity by producing heat. Heat produces steam. Steam produces high pressure steam, and then that that uh, high pressure steam goes into turbine to produce mechanical energy, and that mechanical energy is go that goes into generator to produce electrical energy, and and all other things are done. Okay. Now. Yes. Power equals to work done over time and change of energy divided by time. So Type of exercise to do with every sorry, we can't see your screen. Part of sorry, we can't hear you. You can't see your screen either. That the door has time to do.
I'm guessing the class is over. Yeah, I think so. All right. Bye. Bye.